Okay guys, we're back again, just spun it around just to give you uh, another view. Uh, just while I remember, I use one of these. I had this on my last bike, I really, really like this. It's a simple top cap mounting for my um, phone. Now it just has a plate that screws under the top cap and it's just almost like a, uh, an eighth turn twist. You just slide your phone in now, he says. And that just spins on. But I use, that, it's just convenient, it really works well. I'm often using maps and things on my phone while I'm riding, so it's just, uh, it just helps a lot. Uh, so for this side, what can I say? So I read lots of horror stories about standard SRAM SX rear derailleur being a problem and snapping and generally being a pain in the back side. Um, so before I came up with any of those problems, because uh, I don't like, I certainly wouldn't want to be out on a ride and have something fail or break, that would just really annoy me. So um, about 50 miles, not even that, into having the bike, I swapped the rear derailleur for a Shimano SLX, which I've used in the past. I've used XTs and SLXs. Um, and they just work. They always have done it. You know, they've been about for donkey's years. Um, and yeah, they just fit and forget, which is what I want really. So swap that out, uh, along with not really necessary, but I fitted an SLX uh, shifter as well, just because I know they work well together. The stock shifter wasn't really a problem to be honest with you. It, it works okay, but just to avoid any indexing problems, um, and they're not a huge amount of money by any means. Uh, I just thought I'd fit the pair together and, and that's, that's been spot on. I have to say, the bike shifted fine. Um, it wasn't like there was a problem. I mean, it, it shifted fine with the, with the SRAM stuff on it, but it was just purely to avoid any, uh, any downtime if something failed on me while I was out. And as I said, I don't like things failing on me while I'm out really. Um, so I just swapped them out, and now I know that you know they're future proof. Um, pedals, uh, DMR V12 is my my usual pedal. I've always I've used V12s for donkey's years. Um, God, I don't know, fifteen years, twenty years maybe. Um, so I'm just used to them, and again, they never let me down. I've never broken one. Um, they, yeah, they just work really well. So they went on. Funny enough, you do get pedals with the bike as standard, well at least from this as you do, which I was surprised at. I didn't think you'd get anything, but uh, did come with a pair of pedals, but as you can imagine, they're pretty crappy. Um, also went for a SRAM XX1 chain, again, only because uh, I don't think the original ones last two on the original SX chains aren't all that great. And the XX1, to my knowledge, is the strongest chain on the market anywhere in the world at the moment for this fitment, 12 speed chain. <clears throat> um, and although I do have a lot of mechanical sympathy, I'm really careful with my gear changes, uh, not shifting under power, that sort of stuff. These, uh, these Ebes do give quite a lot of stick through the chain, especially if you're using the uh, the power a lot so again it's just preventative for me it was just a matter of not wanting it to fail or the least chance of it failing while i'm out on the bike and to be honest not having to worry about it for for six months or so i, mean, I don't want to be checking my chain every five minutes and buying a new sx1 every five minutes and rotating them every 200 miles so that i don't wear out of sprockets and oh, it just it becomes a pain in the neck for me I, you know, nothing against guys that are happy to do that much stuff. And, but for me, I just haven't got the time or the inclination to muck about. I'd rather just be out riding it, really. Um, and as I said, it, I, I, as far as I know, the XX1 chain is the strongest one available at the moment. So hopefully that'll do me for a while. Uh, so yeah, sprocket's been great. No problems with that. That's a basic sprocket. Uh, Weirdly, on the uh, 
um, sort of sprocket cassette. Really, the cassette being the lowest spec actually helps in this application because it means that it's all steel as opposed to made out of any bits of alley or anything like that. So it is it is heavy, but for what what I'm actually using the bike for, I'd rather sacrifice that and and have longevity. So that's what we get out of the cassette on these bog standard SX cassette, but the whole thing is steel, so um, it should keep going for a while. <clears throat> and given the price of things like XX1 cassettes, there's no way I'm gonna I'm gonna pony up for one of those anyway. The price they are so. Uh, but it works well, it's got a real nice spread of ratios, that's an 1150. Uh, I, there's no way I, I would need anything more than 50. I know you can get 52s and stuff, but I'm, I've never used that. I've very, very rarely run this on the 50 as it is. Maybe two or three times I've only had it up on the 50. Um, truth be told, I'd probably rather sacrifice and go to a smaller, a smaller um, sprocket on there go down from 11 to a 10, which I can't do, unfortunately, because I haven't got the Shimano Micro Spline or the SRAM XD driver on the hub. So I'm stuck with the uh, 11 as my smallest, but I'll, I'll live with it, it's not a problem. Um, so yeah, that's been okay. Uh, what else we got? Yeah, I just think in general, guys, it, uh, overall, really, really pleased with the bike. Honestly, there's no way I would suggest putting anyone off this bike at all. Um, if you're considering it, you're in the market, I, I, I've really not got a bad thing to say. And I would, I would recommend it without a doubt, providing that you may, you know, going into it with the, with the knowledge that you might have to play about with the suspension a bit to get it to suit you. <clears throat> um, I would say definitely what what an awesome what an awesome bike it, it just literally does everything um 29 on the front i mean on on the downhill was it's so confidence inspiring it's unbelievable it, it just it, it just flows it really does it's never going to flick as well as a non-electric bike it's just not going to happen but you know it's so stable uh the battery's been brilliant. The battery's a 625 watt hour. In fact, I'll grab that. <clears throat> so 625 watt hour. Um, this comes with high bikes. I mean, this is a generic power tube from Bosch. Uh, and the high bike fits it with their, their own cover. I mean, depending on what manufacturer you get, they'll fit their own covers. But uh, they just slide off, basically. Um, but what I'd like about the high bike one cover in particular is that the edge, all the way around the edge of this plastic cover, it's actually rubberized. Difficult as well, you probably won't be able to see it on, on the camera, but basically, there's like a, a rubber section which is molded onto the plastic and this goes all the way around the outside around a whole lot so that when this goes in uh, it creates a real nice seal and I've read so many stories about leakages on various electric bikes getting in through the and let's face it this area here is probably the most exposed area on the bike really when you're going for it rain or mud or whatever so you know, it does need to be good, but uh, the only thing I did change on this is um, I felt that the battery, let's go this side, I felt that the battery when it went in, when I picked the bike up, was just a little bit, it could be a little bit tighter in the frame to actually squeeze this edge up against the frame. So I just adjusted the lock inside here just to bring this battery a slightly further back. Uh, onto the frame so that now when you insert the battery you've really got to clamp it shut with your hand but it does mean that this lip is now really tight all the way around the edge of the frame all the way down here <clears throat> and um, I've had this out in, in some pretty nasty weather and always remove the battery uh, from the bike because I keep the battery indoors 
um, mainly because we've had some freezing temps over the winter and stuff. And uh, lithium ions don't like working when it's freezing. They're fine if they're warm when you start. Um, they still keep their temperature as they're working, but if you're starting them from freezing, they don't they don't like it very much. So I always bring the pack inside, but whenever I've taken it off the bike, it's just been bone dry in there, absolutely bone dry. So I think High Bike have got quite a good system with this, with their locking system and their retention system, the sealing system. It all seems to work pretty well. I've, you know, as I said, I've seen many stories of water ingress on various uh, e-bikes, uh, but this. Providing it's adjusted properly on the lock side, um, there's been no problem. It may be other bikes, other higher bikes, will just adjust a little bit tighter than this one was, and you may not need to do it. But I just felt it was needed just just to tighten that tighten that gap up a bit. Um, but for the bottom, I mean, this is all bash guard. This is a plastic cover that goes all the way underneath. Um, there's no exposed metal under there, there's no exposed motor, it's all covered completely, so they've really thought about that. Uh, so overall, yeah, I mean, I don't know what else I could really say about it. Um, yeah, it's been pretty, it's been pretty good, I've been really impressed with it. Oh, just while I remember, if anyone did want to put 220s on, Uh, it's fairly simple the front run in fact let's bring this camera up so the front run a normal 40 mil adapter so the forks are designed for 180 and so we just run a this is actually a Magura adapter, um, 40 mil, so it's 180 to 220. And this is a pretty standard part. You get these anywhere, really. Um, I, I think even a Shimano one would fit. I, you know, I appreciate the Shimano one might not have the cutout here for the piston, but I think the Shimano one still clears anyway. Um, but yeah, so that's front's quite simple. That went straight on. Um, the swept area of the disc is spot on. I've checked it. It's nicely centered on the actual swept area of the disc. Uh, so no issues at all with the front. On the back, <clears throat> it was a bit trickier <clears throat> because I couldn't find anywhere that sold a mount that went from the standard fixing points on the swing arm straight to a caliper uh, when used for 220. Um, so the only option I could find was to use a 20 mil spacer on top. So this is a this is a generic Shimano. Um, this is actually, technically speaking, a 160 to 180 spacer, which actually came off my son's trance. Um, so. But knowing that I only needed 20 mil, because obviously the standard mount is for 200, I'm running 220, so this is just a, a 20 mil adapter. Again, it lines up, fits perfectly well. I'm just a bit, I don't know. It, I, I just don't like this. I don't like a mount on top of a mount. I don't know why. Um, it's, it's, it's not weak. It's not going to fail. But uh, I just, I just don't like it. I'd much rather have a mount. A single mount that goes from the swing arm right up to the caliper and be done with it but I couldn't find one so that kind of uh, answered my question for me really um, but it works fine as I said the swept area is perfect it's spot on it's it's nicely um, covering the disc at the inside edge and the outside edge uh, and it's been great um, the only other thing if you can just see poking out there just in here. That is the magnet for the speed sensor, which is buried behind here. The original discs, Maguras, they do it really, really neatly. They have a, a dedicated hole in the disc for a magnet to sit in, and it's held on the back side with a, like a spring washer. 
And it's just really neat and discreet, and I, I really liked it. But there's obviously nowhere on the Hope disc because they're more of a universal disc. Um, there's nowhere to put that original magnet, so I was left with no choice but to use a bolt-on. Um, there is actually a Bosch magnet, but it's a bolt-on uh, straight onto the disc. And to me, it's just not as neat. I mean, it's just me being finicky. If I can spin it round. There it goes. One second. Sorry about that. Yeah, I'll just spin it round so you can just see how that's bolted on there. Um, don't use any other magnets for Christ's sake. Uh, I don't know what what Bosch do that's specific to their magnets, but there's so many people that have had problems putting like you know generic cheap Chinese magnets on, and they just don't pick up. The, the, the distance between this magnet and the speed sensor is actually quite a lot, and I was surprised that it even registers it, but it does. It works perfectly. And this um, magnet is probably about the same location, like front to back, as it is on the original Magura disc. Um, but it's still quite some way from the sensor. Uh, but it works fine. If you use any other magnets, I'll be amazed if you're going to get a reading off of it and you'll cause all sorts of problems with your speed. It might not run properly and everything else so it's a bit annoying given that these are like 15 quid for a bit of pressed steel on a and a magnet uh but again it works it's fit and forget it's done isn't it um so that's it really uh i think we covered most of it tires have been really good stock tires they're the maxis uh been no issues with those a nice size as well, uh, 2.8s on the rear, and uh, I think it's 2.6 on the front. Can't remember, something like that. But they've been really well, uh, working no problem. Um, so overall, yeah, uh, Purion display. Again, some people moan about the fact that there's they're a bit basic, but they're so you know, so discreet. Um, it gives me all the information I need. The only thing that I do miss, if I could choose, would be a, a clock. Now, it might sound stupid, but I just like knowing where I am in terms of time when I'm out riding. But then I'm normally running with the phone in there anyway, so um, with maps running or something. So it's not the end of the world, but there's times when I'll just, you know, I won't run a phone. I'll just like to have that time info really um but yeah i, I just well, i remember that. that's the seat was smc sport gel men just for anyone that was interested ergon smc sport gel uh oh i'll show you that the bike runs, in fact most high bikes I think, they run this modular rail system just here. So you can remove this rubber insert. He says. That just pulls out. And in there you have, well, literally a rail. And you can put some various attachments. High bike do their own accessories for those. Uh, but they're expensive. Uh, I think their water bottle solution is like 50 quid or something ridiculous. But you can also use it to mount a secondary battery, which I think is a 500 watt hour. Um, so you're looking at like 1125 watt hour combined. I mean, that's just monster, guys. I, I, I don't know where you would use that. Um, you'd have to be doing some serious touring, I think, to use that. But it's available if you want it. And it's nice that High Bike give you the option of doing it. Um, but you can also get um, the rail to regular um, bottle mounts, which is all I did. Um, as I said, the high bike bottle solution is nice. It's a fidlock kind of setup, which works really well. But I'm not paying 50 quid for it. Sorry, high bike. That's uh, just crazy. Uh, so you can buy just the two mounts. Um, Les had these in stock. 
and then you can run a conventional cage which isn't as fancy or as flash as a fid lock because it just plops in there but it works uh, so it's you know no issues really um, but yeah general overall feel it feels well built uh, it's just you know simple charge port if you want to charge on the bike um, I don't think I've even done that yet to be honest with you as I said I always bring the battery indoors uh, but it's there if you want it um, so apart from really I would say the, the two main things I've done that made such a difference is sorting out the, uh, the suspension that, that just transformed this bike um, it's never going to feel as nice as a coil shot guys it's not going to happen again you know we're still talking budget suspension here it's at the end of the day it's a budget bike um, I'm sure we all know you can spend 9, 10, 11 plus grand on a bike, on an e-bike, but this is right at the bottom end of the market, so we can't expect we're going to get, you know, top-notch suspension. But it works actually very well. I've got no gripes with it now that the, the tokens have been removed. Um, I'm certainly not going to expect anything more from what is essentially a fairly low-spec shop. It, it, it is what it is, and I'm not, I'm not going to criticise it. Um, so it does what it does. I mean, we still get a lockout. Uh, we still get a rebound adjustment. We don't have any compression adjustment, but then I normally run compression fully open anyway. Um, for most shocks, unless you've got a really high end shock, uh, most compression just feels to it like it adds diction to me, which I hate. So, uh, but yeah, that's, that's all working fine. Um, I suppose the only issue I've got with the front is that we haven't now got markings for 180 mil travel. So, but I've worked it out. I, my sag is about 10% on the 160. I normally run 20 odd percent, 25% sag maybe. Um, so when when I'm sitting at around 10%, uh, I know that's about right for the 180. So you just get a feel for it. Um, yeah, so other than that, oh, I just, oh, just again, being a tart, I just changed the decals. I think they're white and black or something on the original bike. I just bought a decal set off the bay just to match the bike, really. Um, rims have been no problem. Um, 30 mil wide on the front, 35 on the back. Uh, oh, I've not had any issues with those at all. Uh, they're still running straight as a die. Likewise, no issues with the hubs. They're uh, high bike zone. Um, yeah, so it's, there's no problem on there. Anything in there? Uh, yeah, up the top there. So I'll just try and get this on camera or not. You can sort of see the lock mechanism at the top. Um, yeah, like I said, you can adjust that just to get that battery a little bit tighter in the frame. Uh, coming back, crank's been fine. That's high bike zone again. You know, no issues there. As I said, the motor is brilliant. Absolutely love the motor. Fantastic, and it's it seems tiny as well. It's just so the only. I mean, I've, I like high bikes because I just I think they look aggressive. I like the angular looks. It's, they are a bit marmite. I think a lot of people say they look absolutely bloody awful, um, and that's fine. You know. I've got no issue with that, but personally, I think they look really nice. I just love the angles. The only bit I'm a little bit confused about, and which I'm not necessarily agree with, is this. It's almost like they built the frame for a different motor. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, even if they did build the frame for this motor... I just don't know, it just feels like it's wasted space. I don't know, maybe they could have put a little, I don't know, boarded it off and had a little cubby hole in there to put your multi-tool or something. I don't know, do something with it rather than just have it open. Oh, I don't know, maybe I'm just being picky. Um, but it, it just it just strikes me even now, it's just a bit odd. But other than that, I, I, love, I love the angles. I think it just looks mad. Um... Yep, no play in all the swing arm bearings. They're, they've been absolutely rock solid. 
Um, rear hub's been fine, there's no movement or play there. Um, high bike do use um, their own axle system. I think it's their own system, but it's really simple. It's just a thread on the other side. So it's not, I don't know if you really call it like a quick release, but it, it is a lot better than having to get any tools out, put it that way. Um, and that's been fine. Uh, yeah, so I mean, as it comes, 780 bars, standard. Um, a nice short stem, uh, 50 mil. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it just feels nice. It feels great, handles well, doesn't feel overly big. Uh, so don't be afraid to maybe go up a size on what you're used to. Uh, great bike. Uh, so there you go, guys. I just thought I'd give you just an overview. Sorry I've waffled on probably a little bit too long, to be honest with you. Um, this was only meant to be like a 15-minute video, but I've just waffled on talking about nonsense. But uh, maybe you find it interesting. Maybe you find it helpful. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, if you're in the market, definitely consider it. Just one more thing, actually, I will say. If you are in the market to get one of these or a similar bike, it might be worth looking at the All Mountain 6 because for the extra, I think it's going to average around 800 quid. You get full carbon frame, you get a full carbon triangle, and you also get Fox 38s. Now, I don't know about you, but I think Fox 38s is a very nice fork. And for 800 quid to get all of that, I, I personally think is a steal. Um, uh, if you were to try and do that, well, you couldn't do it at a later date because you're never going to be able to do it. It's just not wouldn't be worthwhile doing it to get the frame and stuff. But um, if you can stretch to an, eight, an extra 800 quid or so over and above the price of this 3.0, then personally, I would seriously consider it. Um, just be just to have that carbon frame and swing arm. Um, I don't. I don't think it's noticeably lighter. Um, but certainly, I would like a pair of Fox Thirty Eights. There's no doubt about it. So, just something to bear in mind. I didn't go for it because I just couldn't stretch to it. It's as simple as that. I just couldn't. I. I, I there just wasn't enough money left in the kids' piggy banks. Um, I've gone down the back of the sofa. I've done everything to basically fund this. And so uh, it just wasn't an option. But if you're thinking about it um, or you can stretch to it, have a, have a think because it might be worth it. So, yeah, overall, though, guys, that's it. Uh, just a little food for thought, really, if you're in the market. And uh, whatever you decide on, if you get an e-bike, whichever one you get, they're great fun. And... Uh, I'm sure you'd have many days having fun on one of these, whether it's high bike or specialised or cube or uh, trek or whoever you want to go with. Um, they're all good. Um, I, it's just that high bike's the only one I've had, so that's the one I'm talking about. But uh, anyway, guys, yeah, have fun and uh, happy riding. Take care. See you later.